In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the skin shader in Marmoset Toolbag 2. Uh, so we're going to be applying it to the free head model and textures that uh, you'll often find it's a bit of a renowned kind of model and files. Uh, so make sure you download the zip file with these in. So I should have provided a link in the page below. So if we just go to add mesh and select test 2 and import this model in. So we can see we've got a quite a detailed head asset to use here. And if you load up the textures in Photoshop, you'll see we've got the diffuse color and the um, normal map. Okay, so first thing we're going to do then is load in a new material. So just press the new button here and we'll just call this skin test and uh, we'll drag this shader onto the model here. So if you now scroll down in your material settings you'll see in diffusion you've got the Lambertian tab. If we just hit this here you'll see you can select skin from this drop down. Now this gives us access to all the different nodes we can use to affect the skin. Uh, we still keep the albedo slot though, and that's our diffuse slot, so let's just load in our colour map. Um, and the second kind of really obvious thing you can see from this model is that our specular is very high. So let's tune our specular right down. Now I'm literally going to have it as low as 0 0.006. Um, I'm also going to tweak the colour to be a bit more similar to the skin tone of our character. Um, so this specular setting is affecting this kind of front on specular here but notice we have a Fresnel option as well and you see when I rotate around the head you'll see you're getting this shine around the edge of the model here. So let's also tune that right down as well. So you can test it just by rotating around your model. So I might put that down as low as 0.1 and again I might just slightly tweak the colour of that too. So we're really not having much specular effect on our model at all and that's what we want because skin doesn't have a very high specular amount. Okay so the next thing we'll do is add in a normal map so if you come up to the surface option here and add in the normal map and to really test if the, how much effect that's having if you scroll down to your diffusion uh, subdermis normal smoothing option here and just tune that down and you'll see that's having more effect and you probably just want to check that you've got it on the right on the right channel here and that's looking right to me just the default settings so we'll whack our normal smoothing back up to about 0.3 because we do want to have the normal map having some effect but not too much Alright, so the next thing we're going to do then is add a light into this scene so that when we're applying things like subdermal um, and subsurface scattering we can see these effects uh, working in both light and dark. So if we come up to the Add tab here um, and we'll just add a new light into the scene. Now just to show you showing, if you just delete this out and select your sky, you can actually just left click on the image and it will create a light source where that is coming from. So we can select now select that in the scene and drag this out. Um, now at the moment we've got the light kind of coming from this direction and that's because we've clicked on our image where the bright spot is. Uh, so what we actually probably want to do here is go back to our sky and rotate this around so that the face is being diagonally lit from one side. 
Um, with our light selected, we might just turn down this brightness a touch too. Um, so notice the advantage of having a light in the scene rather than just using the um, sky is we're getting shadows now cast onto our model as well. So you can just turn those off to see what kind of influence they are having. So this is kind of the rough light rig will go off. I think this will do. I might just ramp this light position, rotation up a little bit just to get a bit more kind of shadow cast on there. Okay, so that's the light rig we're going to we're going to work from. So if we scroll down in our settings, let's tweak our specular to suit to our new settings. I might put it as low as say 0.03, so just a touch of specular. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, work with our with our scene and create the different nodes required, different maps required for these settings. So the first thing to do is to jump back into Photoshop, go to your color map. And we're going to need to do some tweaks on this. So, uh, basically, at the moment, when we look at our color map, you can see we've got a lot of things like uh, red color tints, it's kind of yellowy blue color tints in here, painted into this texture. Now, that would be fine if you were just using this as a diffuse map, but when you're using the skin shader in Toolbag 2, the albedo map actually acts more like an epidermal map. And the best way to explain this is basically the skin um, colour without all the influences from below the skin affecting it. So the reason these cheeks are quite red is because there's quite a lot of blood beneath this area here, which is giving the skin a red tint. Around under the eyes, nowhere near as much blood gets to here, which is why they have a much more uh, kind of blue and yellow tint to them. So this is a really quick kind of slight hack to do this, but if we just add a hue saturation layer to this and just reduce this down to about minus 40, now that takes quite a lot of the colour out of this and this can act as an epidermal map. So let's just do file save as, we'll use Targa and we'll call this EPI for epidermal map. Save as 24 bits because we don't need the alpha. And then if we jump back into Marmozette and we'll load that epidermal map into here. Uh, so you can see he's looking a lot more kind of gaunt now, and that's because all the color, the main colour is going to come through from our subdermal. Um, one thing also, if we look at the colour of this light, this has been determined by where I clicked on the image here. Now, I think I'd actually rather this be a warmer light than a cool light. So maybe something like that. Okay, so with our epidermal map done, the next map to create is our subdermal map. Now, a subdermal map is basically all the different um, stuff underneath the skin that's going to affect the overall colour for it. So I'm talking about the bones, such as the jaw. I'm talking about all the fleshy areas where you get a lot of blood under the skin, which give it a red tint, such as around the cheeks and kind of around here as well and under the eyes where you don't get so much blood as well. So to create this map, if we just come back into Photoshop, we're going to make a new layer on this called the sub, sorry, a new group called sub. And we'll add a new layer into that. And what we'll do is we'll pick a kind of rich red and then just use Alt and Backspace to um, fill that in. So that's going to be like our base kind of subdermal colour. Like we could tweak this slightly, make this a bit darker, maybe come up here and give it a bit more of a blood red kind of tint. And then just make it invisible so we can use our layer below as a reference. So the next layer we'll want to create is the kind of colour tone under here. 
So maybe we'll try a colour like that to start with. Maybe we'll take it a bit more extreme and kind of go quite kind of blue on it. So I'm going to use a nice kind of soft brush on this too. I'm just kind of painting this area here. Okay, so we could actually just quickly test this out. So let's save this as our subdermal map. Now at the moment, obviously, this is looking very, very basic. But for kind of more kind of complex characters, especially in things like uh, rendered visuals, you'll want to be thinking about things like veins um, and stuff like that too. So if we select our subdermal map, And we can see the effect that it's having. So if we turn down our subdermal scatter, so it's not scattering too far, you can see if you look around the eyes, you can see the effect that map is having. So the subdermal colour will add, if we say tweak this to something like red, and we'll crank this up, then maybe try something like blue as well. It will scatter the colour of your map around, so you might want to keep that reasonably kind of low. Uh, the normal map smoothing will smooth off your normal map, so obviously for maybe an older character with more wrinkles, you might want to have your normal map more predominant. If you put the smoothing up really high, you'll see the normal map influence is very low. So I'm probably going to put this around 0.5 for now. Okay, so other elements we might, we, we might want to add in. If we just bring back our layer here. We might want to consider the fact that the jaw is very close to this kind of area here. So we might give ourselves a kind of lighter Uh, kind of less kind of influence in these areas here where less blood is going to get through so I'm not going to spend kind of too much time on this but just showing you that I'm thinking a bit about where there'll be kind of more kind of blood and flesh underneath the skin that will tint the colour of it. Uh, so also with our layer here we we'll probably want to blur this a reasonable amount so we get a nice kind of gradient off here. Okay, so we'll save this out now. I'm not going to do too much on this because it's not kind of part, specifically part of the tutorial. We can see, if you can see now, the um, the eyes are getting less effect than the rest of the uh, rest of the face. Okay, so once you're happy with those settings, one thing to try actually real quick to point out, if you look at the shadows running along our skin here, if we put the blur onto nothing, you see we get very kind of hard edge, hard edge shadows, which isn't really what we want. The higher you ramp that up, the more blurred your shadows become. So we'll keep that reasonably high. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the translucency map. If you try just ramping your translucency up to full, you'll see what this effect is creating. 
So basically this is the effect of subsurface scattering. So when light gets into the skin and kind of bounces around before running out of power, it actually illuminates inside the skin. So to give you an example of what I mean by that, we look at some of these images here. Um, a classic one here is a kind of hand like this. So actually this is a render, but you can see the point. If you hold a torch up to your fingers or a lighter or something like that, you can see the effect. This isn't just useful for skin, it can be used on um, things like marble or a candle, some things like that as well. Anything where light can actually enter the material, penetrate through the material and bounce around inside it. Right, so obviously we don't want the whole character to be glowing like this. So um, how do we control this? Well, basically we can use a translucency map. So if we come back into Photoshop here, turn off our sub layer and add another group, and we'll call this one SSS, and we'll drop a, a new layer into there and fill this in with black, because anywhere that's black is going to have no subsurface scattering. And then we'll add another new layer, this time set this to white. And then what we want to do is go around our model and think where where would there be areas um, where subsurface scattering would occur. The way to think about it is any area that's like a thin layer of skin. So really looking here, we've got the ears, we've got the kind of edge of the nose here, and possibly the lips and the and the eyes as well. So with a black layer off, so we can use our texture as a as a reference, we will start to fill some of this in. And with the nose, you might be thinking, well, it's only going to be the edge of the nose because you've got this kind of bone in the way here that's going to stop that, stop that effect. So I'm thinking just for now, these kind of areas. Obviously, you should be a lot more kind of refined about this, really. So I'm not being that refined about it, I'm just doing this bit of a test. So we'll save this out as map SSS. Again, we don't need the alpha, so we'll save as 24 bit. And in our translucency, we'll load our SSS map. And we can see those areas are now starting to glow. Um, but we can see the fall off is very sharp and obviously the effect is way too high. So what we want to do now is just come back in here and tweak this still further. For instance, we might fill in those ears a little bit more, maybe with just a slightly kind of lower, lower opacity kind of around here and around here. And uh, really we should be, if you're more aware of what your UVs are like, this is obviously much easier. So the nose, really, we shouldn't have these bits affected as well. But again, like I said before, this is just a, a bit of a quick example, so I'm not expecting it to be perfect. Now what I am going to do, though, is blur this now as well. That might be a touch too much, so we'll go back in. And what I like to do here, actually, is just duplicate this layer and then hide one of them. Um, the reason for that is so that if we're not happy with the blur, we can undo it basically. Okay, so we'll try something like that. I 
Okay, so notice here that you have two controls for your translucency as well. So if we put this one down to zero, you see we're not having um, any effect. But if we put this onto full, then you'll see that even though there's no light casting on the ear, as in from this light source, we're still getting SSS. And that's because our sky translucency is also being used. So this is the ambient light we're getting from the sky is also affecting affecting the subsurface scattering. So if we want to test out how much it's working on the ear, you can see it's a subtle, very subtle effect at this stage. And that's because we've only got this one kind of light source in. What you could do to test it is add another light source in. Something like a point light. And stick this kind of behind the ear like so. And then you can really kind of see what that subsurface scattering is doing. Uh, but we're going to leave that out and stick with our our single kind of main light source. So just remember this is the overall amount of SSS and your translucency um, for the sky is the overall what the overall sky is doing to the SSS and obviously it doesn't look very realistic here because of that fact that even though there's no main light source cut affecting this because we've got this so high it's making it look like there's a lot of SSS here. Uh, you can also scatter the subsurface so let's just do that real quick and you can see you can, that can help create that um, create that blur effect that we were just doing in um, Photoshop. Okay, so with that map done, the next map is our fuzz map. And if you just crank the fuzz up to full, we can see what this is actually doing. So basically, fuzz is referring to the, like, on a, a lot of people have a very thin layer of fuzz, kind of fur, like very small, fine hairs on their faces. And um, that's what this effect is emulating, basically. Um, when you look at someone, say, from this angle, and there's a light source here, on this cheek, you'll have quite a lot of uh, like light being bounced around and refracted by the, by, the, by the hair. So to paint this map, we come back into our scene, sorry, I'm into Photoshop, and we make a fuzz folder. Two new layers, and in the first layer, we fill that in again with black, and that's using Alt and Backspace. And then in our file here, we want to paint on in white where we think that fuzz will be. So what you want to be thinking about is where the where there might be this thin layer of fuzz. And I'm kind of thinking around the cheeks, uh, around the kind of beard and the chin around the moustache here, maybe even like a little bit on the nose as well. I'm thinking there's going to be much on the kind of forehead area. Uh, you might get some kind of around the around the back of the around the back of the head as well. Might be best to use a kind of bigger bigger brush for this. Like so. So if we just turn on our map here. And we'll save this out as a TGA again, and this time fuzz. So wherever there is black, there'll be no fuzz. Wherever there is white, there'll be full fuzz, and gray is in between. So we'll load our fuzz map into here. And you can see the areas that are being affected there. So I might obviously turn down here. You can also scatter this to again create that. We just crank this up to full. 
we can again scatter that just to create some kind of blur as well. So I'd say it's definitely still too high. And I might just change the color down to something like that. Okay, so that is pretty much the control that we have over our skin shader. At the moment on this, I'd say that scatter's definitely looking too high. Uh, but other than that, it's working pretty effectively. Remember, you can control your normal map smoothing up here. And one, a couple of other things we'll want to do. Uh, if we come over to the Render tab, first of all, turn off the background so that we can really see what's going on with this. Um, also, turn on ambient occlusion and just have a play around with the settings for this. So I'd say we want the size to be quite low, obviously the strength to be much lower, and obviously you can just tick it off and on and see what kind of effect that's having. Uh, obviously you want high res shadows. Okay, so once you're done, obviously if you follow my previous tutorials, you can output a turntable for this. Um, but we can just see it in the viewport here. And it's, this is a good way of kind of testing out. You can see what the subsurface scattering is doing on the back here. So that influence is definitely too high. Um, you can also see if you're getting any ambient occlusion flicker or if your Fresnel or Specular are too high. Okay, so that's using the skin shader in Marmoset Toolbag 2.